Hello there. Before we get started on today's episode, I'd like to ask a short favor. If you're interested in either of the two books that I have written and I'm about to release, head on over to my website at theanxioustruth.com slash books. There you can learn about both books, one of which is free, and you can get on my mailing list to be notified when each book is released and how you can get it. I would really appreciate that. Okay, let's get rolling. Okay, we're back again. What's up, everybody? Drew here, thatanxietyguide.com. Say hello to Billy from Anxiety United in the UK. Here we go again. Here we go again. We're back. We're doing two in a row again, so I'm going to blow through our intro. We are doing a series of videos on an article I wrote many years ago, and we will link that article in both of our video descriptions so you can read along if you would like to. Today we are up to section nine. This would be nine, yes. right? And today we are going to talk about uh, oh, so by the way, the article is kind of an anxiety 101. I forgot to say that. Mm -hmm. um, so today we're going to talk about therapy and getting professional help and what the, the value and the role of that is and the different types of therapy that you're going to find and how they fit into this whole anxiety, panic, agoraphobia thing that we're, we're dealing with. So let's get rolling. Have you, have you dealt with therapy, Bill? Uh, only CBT. That's the only thing I've been, uh, worthy of trying cognitive behavioral therapy cognitive behavioral therapy, I've, yes. I've had three sessions of that so here in the uk you can refer yourself to a it's called the iapt improved access to psychological treatments so you don't need to go through your doctor over here you can phone a number they do like an evaluation over the phone and then decide how best to take the next step sort of thing so they offered me cognitive behavior therapy and i went for it i think you get eight sessions perhaps once a week and that's my experience, and that's as useful as it was. Okay. Was how much info I just gave you? Not very. <laughs> wow, okay. Well, we're definitely going to talk about CBT, because <laughs> any, anybody who has seen more than about three minutes of me talking or whatever online knows that I'm a huge, huge, huge fan. I'm a dyed-in-the-will behaviorist, so the Freudians can suck it. Um, here's what I, I wrote. The, the thing for me, just to, just to elaborate on the point, I think the therapist – has a lot to do with the value that you get from the treatment. And I think for me, the, the therapist in my area, there's only one that you can see, and I've seen him twice before now. Right. And the first time I got nothing, and the second time I got the same. Nothing again. So it, yeah. The therapist does have a lot to do with it, and there's also a lot of confusion. Here, I, you know what? I mean, this is good because you know, I'll offer different points of view. I can tell you the way it is in the States, which is obviously different. We don't have that universal health care that you guys have. Um, but I'll start with, I'll tell you what I wrote. Uh, cognitive behavior therapy, CBT, you can hear about a lot, is hands down the most effective current long-term treatment for panic disorder and related anxiety disorders. And that is flat out the truth because we mm -hmm. have mountains of clinical evidence that show that these type of therapies, behavioral action-oriented therapies, are as effective as even medication on the long-term, um, more effective, actually as effective on the short-term, more effective on the long-term. And we just, it's just decades of clinical evidence that shows this. So I say, if you're seeking professional help, help, look for a therapist that specializes specifically in CBT and anxiety disorders. And mm -hmm. this is, I think, maybe what you ran into with you. Um, here in the States, you're kind of on your own. You, we have, if, whatever your insurance is, if you, if you have it, um, of course, not everybody does here in the States. That's true. So mm. most health insurance has a very limited mental health coverage, sadly, right. for us. Mm. So you're sort of on your own a little bit. And um, it's you really have to find a therapist that was trained in this and specifically mm. does that. And I don't know if through the NHS – a therapist has the luxury of doing that or not i don't think so i think that's the yeah they get they get sort of what they need to know right and that's enough for that but he's also going to see yeah, yeah, yeah. a patient yeah. that has other issues not just anxiety issues yeah. well funnily enough my wife who was suffering a bit with depression like four or five years ago seen the same yeah, therapist the same therapist and, and got nothing unfortunately from that either it's a tough one because i would imagine mm -hmm. that in his defense maybe he is going to take whatever the nhs brings him exactly that's it yeah so, he's only got the tools that he's been given exactly so mm -hmm. what we have here is a situation where i see people that reach out for therapy and i think the first thing that we should probably say is it's never a bad idea it is oh, yeah. it is never mm -hmm. a bad idea mm -hmm. even the strongest can use help from time to time we're only human so mm -hmm. i am not ashamed of the fact that i have sought help in that area 
a couple of times, and I'll, I'll, we'll, we can talk about it with varying degrees of success. It, it, it's help is not a bad thing to do to get. So get it. Don't don't be stubborn. That's it. And I think, um, but. Just to go on, what I wrote is therapy focused on simply talking about your life might be helpful to some degree. And, and you could look at episode eight that we just did. As we just covered, yeah. Right. Um, very little to some degree, but that is a really long-term process. So psychodynamic therapies, talking about your mom and your family and that you try and please people too much or whatever the, it may be, mm. is a very long-term therapy. It's slow and it does very little to address the immediate needs of somebody who's dealing with a panic disorder or an anxiety disorder of some kind. Um, CBT, behavioral action-oriented therapies, are fast. So generally speaking, within a couple of months, if you're doing the work and the therapy is correct, if you will, or being practiced correctly, you're mm-hmm. going gonna to move forward pretty quickly. You can always go back and deal with, you know, what I, I was picking out a little. Once that's done, feel free to talk for years about how your mother might, have, might not have hugged you enough as, as a child. And we all have baggage, so that's fine. I don't mean to be yeah, yeah, yeah. But first, let's deal with the behavioral and cognitive issues that are stopping us from getting in the car or picking our kids up from school or going shopping or whatever it may be. Exactly. And that's why we're here. It is why, so that's we're, why we're there. Rather. That's exactly right. So for, right. for us here in the States where you're kind of on your own, you're going to find a therapist. And they're out there. There's a million of them. There's, mm-hmm. there's probably 500 practicing therapists of some kind within a 20-mile radius of where I am right now, I bet. Mm-hmm. That's not an exaggeration. But you have to find one that specifically deals, if you can, with anxiety disorders. And it's not enough mm-hmm. just for the person to say, oh, I have anxiety patients. Now, you guys are in a different situation. You don't get to choose that, I guess. You're going to get yeah. whoever they send you to. Well, you can, I mean, you can go private over here, but obviously. Okay. It's expensive. Costing. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. I, did, I did try that. I forgot to mention. I, I sought private therapy for about, I don't know, probably three, four months. And I, I was honestly getting more from that. It was just some little old lady. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was going around to her house every week and we'd sit in this quiet room and she'd have candles go in and we'd always end the session with like a mindfulness thing or just some grounding technique or something. Right. So it was re- it was really personal tailored care yeah. to exactly what I was after and she was obviously qualified. I don't know where, but she had experience with similar people to myself. So maybe the freedom that she could go down whatever path she felt necessary for me that was the benefit i think yeah and that's what we have here i'll tell you the very best therapist i ever had was did not practice behavioral therapy i mean she had experience with it and the the experience that i had with her was that she understood what i needed and i was really (laughs) doing it myself and she just supported that she Mm. would give me advice as i needed it she would listen to what my progress was she would give me tips here and there but for the most part, she just understood, like, you, you need somebody to just kind of prop you up while you're doing this. And she was that for me. She was awesome. Mm. But uh, the most effective therapy and professional help we're going to find, and I keep saying the words action-oriented because it is. When you're dealing in a behavioral therapy, there's actual work to do. So yeah, yeah. Did you find that you were given assignments, workbooks, worksheets? Well, as I mentioned in one of the previous episodes that we've done here with the, with the one session where we had to go out and actually do exposure right. therapy yes. that was the most beneficial it was the most scary and it stopped me going again so i let it defeat me at that time but 100 percent. if you're just gonna we've said it before if you're just gonna sit and read a book and that book doesn't tell you or doesn't make you feel nervous at the thought of carrying out some of the tasks then there's no point yes you know you've got to be willing to well we said it no comfortable way it's all about that the therapy whatever it is that you're doing it can't just be a case of sit there and this will change your life. Yes. It won't. Well, I, I think people also look for some sort of magic bullet. That, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. That I'm, I'm going to stumble upon this thing like, oh, that's right. When I was eight, my dad did this. And yeah, now, yeah. now I'm cured. And it, it, yeah. unfortunately, this doesn't now work I'm not that way. Scared, now I'm not scared of feeling dizzy in a supermarket. Right. That just not doesn't work, work that way. Exactly. So what we're looking for when we're dealing with CBT and it's variants, there's, there's rational emotive therapy. There are variants of this, but I think what we're really, what I'm stressing anyway, I only speak for myself, is a, is a behavioral cognitive action oriented therapy. And you're going to find that your therapist will lay out an actual action plan. This is what we're going to mm-hmm. do. I'm going to teach you how to identify the irrational negative thoughts and then counter them logically. And, and there are actual exercises that you will learn to do. Like, okay, I feel dizzy. 
Okay, so mm-hmm. what's what you know, it'll take you all the way down that road. Okay, so what happens if you're dizzy? I may fall down. Okay, what can happen if you fall down? So you, yeah. you have to follow that thought process Evid- all the way. Evidence through. based. Evidence that's exactly based. right. That's, that, that's what I got from my. That's exactly right. CT. But I think the problem here in the UK is perhaps that they have so many people coming through the doors sure. that it is. It's like you see one, you ship them out. You see the next, you ship them out, and you can't really go off what it is that you've got to focus on. You just try and do the same thing. They don't have time to really customize and tailor this the treatment. That's what I find over here. That it's interesting sense. that you said as well with your health insurance in the US that the mental health bit is so much smaller than the physical health. And that's like the goal for over here as well. Yeah. Like the services available for mental health. It's probably the same across the world, isn't it, I guess? That's, probably. Probably. Yeah. Most insurance insurance plans here, unless you are a member of a very large company or a very large labor union, mm. your mental health coverage is pretty limited for the most part. So even people who are practicing this in this profession, you know, they don't. There was a there was a news post posted the other day, and it said I think it was like twenty five percent increase on mental health call outs for paramedics in the UK as well. So like the numbers are skyrocketing. I can believe that. I could totally believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And then we have that, uh, not to get too off track, but that's a big discussion here too. We have our gun violence discussion and debate that's Mm -hmm. going on here now. And and mental health gets dragged into that very often. Yeah, yeah. You know, part of the problem, and I don't want to get into it because it's very political, but, Mm. you know, we don't take care of people's mental health. And and I say Mm. all the time, even just, so here in the States, when we're in elementary school and middle school, you know, up to the point you're 12, 13 years old, you know, they'll, they'll teach you how to brush your teeth properly, which I think is insane. Like you're actually in a classroom and some health yeah. teacher will talk about brushing your teeth, but nothing about anxiety or depression or just mental health yeah, or yeah. taking care of your emotional state. Like e- even mm. two days of that some point in your mm-hmm. 12 years before you graduate would be would yeah. be helpful and something for people to fall back on. But we ignore it here, sadly. Mm. We do. Mm. So when you go and, and seek help, you know, I think the best advice we can offer is that you, you're looking for somebody specifically, if you can, if you're in a, an environment where you can do that. Yeah, if you have the choice, yeah. Where this person has specifically, uh, at least here, I always tell people, you know, you have to find somebody who specifically performs this type of therapy and specializes in anxiety disorders. So the best thing you can ask your therapist is, do you, spe- do you specialize in anxiety disorders only? Yeah. And, yeah. and many therapists, I think, will say, like, <clears throat> well, no, I, but, I, but I know I help people with anxiety. You know, like, well, I expect, mm-hmm. you know, there's going to be worksheets. We're going to have an action plan. Are you going to go out and do exposure with me? Are you going to teach me these tools? And if mm-hmm. the therapist looks at you kind of funny, then yeah, maybe look elsewhere yeah, yeah. if you can. I suppose do your homework while you're yes. looking for a therapist. So know exactly what it is. Yes. Although you might not know what you need, but you can sort of certainly look for somebody who will know what you need, I guess. Yes, that's true. And I think if you start with the understanding that I need to find somebody who deals in behavioral and cognitive therapies, yeah, yeah. and again, action-oriented therapy specifically. Because mm. can... obviously, if you call them up, they're they're trying to sell you a service. That's true. So yeah. So yeah, you've really got to... They, they mm. have to eat, too. I understand that. They, yeah, need, yeah. they need patients. I get that. I don't fault them for that in any way. Uh, mm. Here we have – there are different organizations um, that you could start with at least to try and find therapists. To spread. There, there are professional associations of mental health professionals that specifically deal in things like CBT. And mm-hmm. you could – National Council of uh, NCCBT. I can't remember what it's called, but we have a few of those organizations here that can help you find that person, if you will. Yeah. But maybe we should talk about, you know, so in your situation, in the UK at least, and in other countries where the socialized medicine, maybe you don't have much of a choice in who you get to see. But let's talk about self-help because this mm-hmm. stuff is – these are things you could do on your own too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think you've done a lot of it. I've watched you. Well, I did, a, I did a, a diploma in mindfulness recently. I think it cost me about £30 to do the course in it. You know, and I picked up a decent amount of knowledge through that. I knew most of the stuff already. Right. But things like mindfulness – We've talked about the the meditation, yoga, all these kind of things can all be clusters as therapy, I yes. guess, aren't they? But then there's other stuff that maybe, I don't know, I'm going off track here, but no, like no, the, no. The, the tapping and the stuff like that and the Reiki and aromatherapy, I'm not too fond of the healing benefits, but I, I suppose if they give relaxation, then that is a positive, but perhaps don't rep- rely on that for... yeah taking you out you need to do as you say an action focused treatment it needs to be hands on getting in there get your hands dirty because that's the only way out of this that's it's true. not going to happen with a 
candle in your ear lying there and, you know. <laughs> now who's ruffling feathers? Who's in charge of that today? It would be you. I've never tried it. <laughs> I, well, I think that's, it's good to mention that sort of stuff. There are so many. I, I, in, over the years, I have I think that hundreds I of different things. I don't know about in the U.S., but in the U.K., you don't have, there's no regulation for any of that stuff. No, here Anything either. Yeah. Here either, yeah. Mm. Uh, and we have, and, and it sets up, we can go down this road also for hours on this. It sets up an interesting, like, people butt heads over a lot of these things. Because if you... Yeah. Especially in the circles that I've traveled in where the use of medication, and we'll probably do an episode just on that, the use of meds can actually mm -hmm. exacerbate the problem. Like, mm -hmm. it was my experience in the end. People have such a bad experience with that Western scientific allopathic medicine that they immediately assume that anything that anybody in a white coat says is wrong. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, mm -hmm. anybody that ha is wearing beads must be right. And, yeah. and it sets up a lot of weird stuff. But we have no regulation on that, too, like holistic practitioners mm. and people mm. who practice alternative therapies and healing therapies and energy-based therapies. Yeah, yeah. They can get certifications, but those certifications are privately issued. It's, it's mm. not a thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. Like, my, my mindfulness diploma is were not really worth the paper yeah. that it's printed on. You know? but, but you went through the process, and it, it should yeah, help yeah. you personally. The only, yeah. yeah, the only person that's gained anything from that is me you. my brain but exactly. i would never use that to go and offer you know i'm not going to set up my own yeah I mean, but i think it you know those type of tools shouldn't be completely discounted i think they could be yeah, used yeah. as part of it i uh, think helpful yeah but let's not if we're gonna if we're gonna choose one thing then let's go on the evidence-based yes treat isn't it the stuff that people actually yeah there is evidence out there that this stuff does help just, it might not help everybody, but usually there's probably a determining factor. Maybe it's the therapist or maybe you're yeah. blinkered in what you're actually expecting from it. Like I was the very first time. I was expecting that injection of knowledge that was just going to, you know, take it all away. So that's it. Yeah, we're just going to fix things. And I think I think I actually wrote a blog post about that a long time ago. Why, why this didn't work. So... And sometimes I get into discussions with people who will say, like, well, you're such an advocate of CBT. It didn't work for me. It just didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. And I'll always mm -hmm. ask, them, like, what did you expect to happen? And they'll say, well, like, you know, I went and, and saw a therapist. I had CBT, and I'm still having panic. I still am afraid to get in the car. So, well, mm -hmm. did, did the therapist make you get in the car? And if the answer mm -hmm. is, well, it was too hard or – you know, I didn't want to do that or no, he didn't or yeah, she yeah. didn't do that. Yeah. Well, well, for me, I think the biggest issue is always expectation. You can't go into any form of therapy is expecting that somebody's just going to fix it for mm -hmm. you. Like you mm -hmm. are going to fix it. We, uh, we fix it ourselves. And these people are basically just guiding us and teaching us the techniques that we have to use to fix it ourselves. So unless, unless it's physiotherapy. Yes. Unless it's hey. physiotherapy. <laughs> well, there's so many different things here, but I think, you know, expectation is important. Nothing is going to just mm -hmm. fix this magically. Crystals, tapping, energy, Reiki, acupuncture. And I mm -hmm. know that people were going to come at us on this and say, but I had acupuncture and it cured me. Whatever mm -hmm. worked is fine, that's I brilliant. guess. Yeah, right. that's it. That's Whatever brilliant. works. And if Reiki is a thing and it helps you, then by all means, keep doing it. I'm, I'm all for anything that, that helps people. But in the end, if I'm going to bet, if I'm a betting man and I have to bet where I'm going to get the most bang for my buck and time and, and I'm going to go down this route, I'm going to go down mm -hmm. the road of a cognitive behavioral type therapy. And, mm -hmm. and I'm going to expect that when I get there, I'm going to have to start doing hard work and that it's going to be hard, really hard in the beginning because I'm facing my fear and it's going to get easier because I'm learning how to face the fear. Yeah, yeah. So I've that, just, you know. I just had a thought like maybe – the, the alternative stuff like the tapping and the Reiki could actually become like a safety behavior, couldn't it? You could find yourself maybe sitting in the car waiting to get out to go into the shop and you're sitting there doing all this because you feel that if you don't, so it, it could actually continue the problem, couldn't it? There could be some of that. If you don't have Reiki this Thursday at 7 p.m., yeah. but, you know, I can't pick the kids up from school tomorrow. There could be that kind of link to... That... It could... It could. That's a thing. That's actually mm. a debate among mm. mental health professionals. Oh, right. That's actually a debate. That I'm, I'm, in, I'm in amongst You're in debate. it. You are in it. Yes. You are deep in it now. That is actually a real thing where the question is the people who are the most and, – and I put myself in that camp. I am a dyed-in-the-wool behaviorist. I've said that many times. Mm -hmm. And my personal opinion on that is the only way to do it 
all the way with the most lasting effect where there's no residual and no <laughs> rituals and no safety behaviors left behind all of those things get extinguished is to do it with nothing so yeah. you just go in and you face it and you do the work and there's no tapping and there's no water, there's no mints, there's no coloring books, there's no rubber bands, there's no tricks and techniques, there's no anything that's meant to distract you or anything like that. You just go into it and look it, it right in the eye over and over and over until you give it this. Yeah. That is how you do it. It's do everything with nothing. Yes. You, you look it right in the eye over and over and over until mm. it's no longer scary to you. And there's no other mechanism or technique or tool or pill or anything like that. Give, there's no buffer between you and that fear. You mm. just go right mm. into it and poke it in the chest until you're done doing that. I had an interesting experience on Saturday just gone. So we're probably like a week behind on this, but just right. it was a Saturday and I was feeling really dodgy. And my daughter was at her friend's house and me and my wife were going to just nip some stuff around until she was staying over, having right. a sleep over there. Got in the car and I just felt myself. I could feel that the panic was sort of building already. My nose was really stuffy. That's usually a key thing for me, just that not being able to get the fresh breath. And I was just feeling really out of sorts. We drove about, I don't know, 500 yards from the house. And I just said, and it, it's ridiculous because it doesn't, people don't believe that this happens. But I just said in my head, bring it. Just like in, in that instant, my whole body just completely relaxed. And it was really weird. My, my brain just shut off all the thoughts. Yeah. It was crazy. And it's like I'm trying to sell you some kind of magic thing. But it, seriously, it was that weird. Like, and I don't believe it myself that this kind of stuff happens, but it, it's, it's so crazy. Like, because usually I would just keep rolling with it yeah. and I, I'd end up coming home and feeling probably exhausted, even though I've only driven a mile up the road. I've come home, I've just had to deal with the five minutes of madness, white knuckling it, but I didn't, I just, just let's, it was like, just bring it. Yeah. And I've read that so many times, like, just give me the worst that you can. But I don't think I've ever actually done it because it, when you're in that moment, you don't think to do it. Right. And that's the point. But at this time, I don't know why, but I just said, like, just let's have it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because that's just a lot of experience. So yeah, yeah. That doesn't it's, happen. I think a lot of it is because time. of what we're doing here. These videos yeah. are actually helping me because I'm picking yeah. stuff up every week. Well, it could be. That would be great mm. if it was. But mm. uh, I think experience, you've been at it a long time. And, mm. and to bring it back to therapy – you know, that is the place where if you're in a good form of therapy, you're going to get there because of, yeah, the, yeah. because of the work you're putting in. So yeah. maybe you haven't done it formally every week with a therapist for the last yeah. five or six months, but you have done it yourself with the knowledge mm -hmm. you have gained and the research you have done over years. So, yeah. 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 So to get to that point, and that is exactly where true died in the wool, no buffer, no safety, no nothing. Cognitive behavioral therapy with exposure is going to get you. Yeah, it's going to yeah. get you to the point where you can look it right in the eye and say, you know, mm. bring it, bring, give me more, give me more, mm. I'm not afraid, and, and there is no more. There is no more. And then you know, screw you, there's nothing there. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going back and to the supermarket. That's the evidence. That's yeah. where you build that evidence, isn't yeah. it? That's... But you, so you're looking for you know, a, a type of therapy that's going to get you to that point. And mm. so I, I think we should leave it to the individual. If you want to adjunct that with tapping or energy healing or whatever you think makes you yeah. feel better, that's, that's certainly your own call. My own opinion is there's the, the truest form is no buffer, just you mm. and what you're afraid of. Yeah. But so. I think it could – the other stuff, the alternative stuff could become a problem when you feel that you need right. to have it. Right. I need mm. to have that. I need to have my coloring book. I need to have my, I need to tap. I need to. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of stuff like that. So mm. that, that's the therapy thing. Like when you, there's, there's no harm. Go look for help. Absolutely. Everybody needs mm. help. We're only human. We're not made of steel. Definitely. And, and when you're looking for help, so. try and find the bet, most effective form of help. And I, at least in my opinion, you seem to agree here, it, you know, that CBT or a, 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 a variant of that. Is should, should we just touch out. quickly on like the because male suicide numbers are like ridiculous off the charts yes like the importance of being a male and not being ashamed or not being you know just to, there's nothing to be ashamed of there's nothing to be embarrassed of yes if if you have an issue one million percent just go and speak to your doctor at first or seek private help or whatever but just do something 
don't do nothing. That that's a really solid point, especially mm. two dudes talking to you here. Exactly, that's it. And we're, there's not many of us no on YouTube talking about this stuff because people do, you know, who wants to be known as the guy that can't walk around Walmart because when he does, he's freaking out. He's, yes. There he is, like, pointing at us and laughing at us as we run out of the supermarket. But I don't give a shit whether I run out of there or not. And nobody else should either because it's not something that we do by choice. No, that's true. And I think these these that's a really strong point. And I think, especially in the West, you know, our gender roles. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. We don't cry. We just handle everything. Mm. We're supposed to be, you know, tough as nails and never show emotion and... But everybody's weak to a certain degree. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's, we, everybody is. Every single human being walking the earth is afraid of something, you know, mm -hmm. and has some form of weakness. And, and that thing where, like, I don't want to show this. And, and I'll tell you what makes it even worse. If you go back into the 50s and 60s, this sort of thing was referred to in many circles as housewives disease. It's oh, like, really? Yes. And, and you'll find many statistics that still say that it, it affects primarily women. But that's yeah, not, yeah. That's, I, I hear that all the time. That's reporting bias. It doesn't necessarily, and that's being challenged mm. now because we're a little bit smarter. But only because women are more likely to report that. You know? Yeah, yeah. As, yeah. Whereas a man might say, "Well, like, how can I tell anybody that I'm afraid to drive to work? Like that's yeah, yeah. Kind of, You know, I'm going to be viewed as a wimp, so mm. I can't yeah. do that." But I think if you want to find. I'm going to make a, a statement that might sound ridiculous to some people, but if you've gone through this and gotten to a certain place, and you will probably understand what I'm saying, if you want to find your inner badass, the lion, the fucking alpha, excuse my French, <laughs> that's inside every one of us, do this. Do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so sure, you can go in the gym and do all that stuff and drink beer and, and curse and be with your buddies and do dude stuff that makes us feel like dudes. But if you yeah, yeah. want to find the badass that is you, do this and then come back to me and let me know how you're feeling. It's pretty yeah, freaking yeah. good. Yeah, 100%. pretty freaking good. And, and I will tell you from my own personal experience, I mean, I, I, I will admit to having a, a large amount of caveman DNA. <laughs> You know, I'm that guy. What can I tell you? You know, I'm not a mm -hmm. douchebag, but mm -hmm. uh, we're not family friendly at all today. I'm just letting it rip. So I'm, I'm not that guy, but I am, I am probably w whatever. And, and I had no problem admitting it. I'm here telling you that I was frozen in fear in my bathroom and couldn't get in the car and go pick my kids up from school. And, and That's you, it. you ain't going to find more of a caveman than me, but it even happened to me. So, hey. That's, that's it. I've, all, I've always, I've never had a problem with talking about it. Yeah. I've always found that it's helped me if if I go to somewhere and I'll just say to them like, "Oh, you'll have to excuse me if I'm a bit fidgety or whatever." Right. I might be feeling like I suffer with anxiety. I try not to say suffer. Right. I hate the word suffer now. Like I don't suffer with it. I just have it. I'm Very dealing good. with. It. Yeah. I'm dealing with it. Right. Exactly. It's just. Yeah, yeah. I try yeah. for me. I try and look at it as it's just as if I have a headache or. I hurt my yeah. foot. It's just another thing that people around me are dealing with, and you know, mm -hmm. I'll deal with it too. So that's you think really that's good. Why, is that why the stats are going up? Is just because people maybe are becoming a bit more comfortable talking about it? Do you think it's always been an issue? It's just that now there's more access to tell people, like social media, and everybody knows somebody that suffers with anxiety or has had a panic attack. But just the more that we're connected, the more that people know. I think that's probably true. Social media has been helpful. That This is a whole different topic, but it's a good topic. We can just keep going. Wow. Um, yeah. I think because it leads back to that. What's the stigma? Going out to get help, like admitting that there's a problem so that you go to find help. Social media, I think, has helped. I think it's a double-edged mm -hmm. sword, social media, because we can yeah, go yeah. on YouTube. Look, in 2008 or whenever it was you and I met, that's how mm -hmm. we met. Yeah, yeah. I was just, you know, I went on YouTube and, and did a search. And was, is anybody else? What? Let me just search for panic attacks. And I found this group of people who were, mm -hmm. you know, became a little community. And Billy was one of them. So that's a the Internet social media is a huge help because at least it's maybe helping drop that stigma a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So we can tell like, oh, there are other people who have this, too. It's pretty, mm -hmm. it's pretty mm -hmm. damn common. On the flip side. I have, to, I've, I have to inject my opinion every freaking time. I, I don't know enough to yeah. shut up. So on. on the flip side, here's the bad part about social media. It is almost watering it down because I, I, I actually have seen videos where I want to jump through the screen and I, and I see – what's the best way for me to say this? If you have a thriving YouTube channel because you're good at makeup, awesome. I hope you're driving a Lamborghini and you're horrendously successful at that. 
but because you have anxiety sometimes does not mm -hmm. mean that you should make a video about how to deal with your anxiety, yeah, yeah. you know, because you ran out of makeup tips that day. And what I mean by that, I'm not picking on beauty bloggers. That's fine. But what I mean by that is it's become such a popular topic that it's become almost watered down. Oh, my God, I'm having a panic attack. Like, you are mm -hmm. not having a panic attack. You don't even know what that is. So please stop yeah, yeah. saying that because it's a real thing for many people. A few days down the line, the next video, they're skydiving. And... <laughs> right. So words you know? like anxiety, I have anxiety. Uh, anxiety has become a catch-all for a lot a lot of things so yeah yeah i see where you're going with it you yeah. know what i mean so in a way mm. it's good because we've gotten that it's helping to drop the stigma but in the on the flip side it's it's being watered down to a certain mm. degree too mm. every human has anxiety sometimes that's true but can we please stop using anxiety as a catch-all for just you're upset okay you had a bad day yeah, or, yeah you know yeah. i i don't know if i'm making any sense i'm ranting a little bit like i don't know if you i don't know if you've ever seen if you have a search like hashtag panic attack on twitter like you'll get some that are real and yes. then you'll get oh, i forgot my pencil case hashtag panic, panic attack. attack right you know? right mm. so and it's good because the word panic attack is out there so that's yeah. a good thing but it's bad but it, because yeah it's we're, we're devaluing to a certain extent what it is but i also would, would follow that thought the next way through let's flip it back again the other way and say if you're people like us and you deal with panic attacks don't okay so fine the mainstream is co-opting our thing a little bit and mm. maybe it's used for views and it's clickbait sometimes. And I, and I get mm. all that. And it's watering the topic down to a certain degree. So we get the benefit of increased awareness and dropping the stigma. We know we're not alone. But yet mm -hmm. it's being watered down a bit. But don't be angry that it's being watered down because it's your label. I've seen that too. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. They don't even know what this is. Like that's true. Maybe they don't really know what a panic attack is. But you know what? Don't hang on to this. It's not a badge of honor to say that you have yeah, panic yeah, attacks. Yeah. So, we don't. I don't want to know what they are either. Right. I would rather you know? not have these. Thank you very yeah. much. So let's mm. let's not go flip the other side and be so angry because you're minimizing my issue. Like mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. try and get past that issue and don't hang on to it as a label. I'm not. I, I am not agoraphobic. I am not an agoraphobic. I may have agoraphobic mm. tendencies, but I am not an agoraphobic. That is not my label. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm, mm. I'm ranting again. <laughs> now, now we're up over 30 minutes and I'm ranting again. I like these ones. <laughs> See, you're, you are egging me on. That's, I blame you. Yeah. I blame you. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, so that's the therapy thing. If you need help, go get it and try and find the best help possible. Try and make it be behavioral and action oriented if mm. you can. And self-help, we didn't talk about self-help, we should talk about that. There are, there's a zillion books that you can yes. find, they're, they're inexpensive. I'm gonna recommend the Anxiety and Phobia Handbook. And the, the, uh, the author's name is Bourne, B-O-U-R-N-E, yeah. Edmund Bourne. Isn't Edmund, yeah. Edmund Bourne, that's a good starting place. And it's a relatively inexpensive book, you could probably find it even used in certain places. That's the one with, it's got like worksheets in. And there are can, worksheets yeah. in there, yeah. yeah. And, and you will find that the Anxiety and Phobia Workbook is a good overview of what an action-oriented therapy is all about. <laughs> so we have our Claire, we Claire Weeks books and audiobooks that we talk about all the time. The Bourne book is a good place to start. And you can actually do these things on your own. If you learn a little bit about it and, and understand the techniques, you can do the worksheets your own, on your own. You can do exposure work on your own. You've done it. We've both done it. That's how we met because we were videoing it and sharing the videos. Yeah, yeah. So even if you may have limited resources, you don't have insurance or you can't find a therapist that's suitable for you, it's possible to engage in this sort of therapy on your own. It might be slower. You might make some mistakes and there might be some you know detours here and there. Yeah. But there's no reason to sit and just wring your hands because, oh, no, there's no CBT therapist available to me. You, mm -hmm. can, you can do this on your own to a certain extent. That's probably a topic all by itself. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, all right, let's wrap this one up. We're up at 33 minutes. Blimey. This is, we it's, only have one more. It's Pepsi Max look, with ginger. <laughs> We're doing Pepsi. spicy. No, we're doing we're doing soft drink commercials this morning too. What else can we do? Let's. Um, we only have one left. Next week we're going to talk about the impact of lifestyle, which we could probably talk about for an hour. Also, diet, uh -huh. exercise, that sort of stuff. Um, and then that's kind of the end. So, um, you know, comments, questions. We were talking about doing a Q and A. We wrap this up. Also, the medication maybe will medication uh, we might add on this article. So you'll see the article. Like I said, it's linked in the video descriptions or the website wherever you're watching or listening to this. Read the article, but we'll probably. I mean, I think if we have our way, we'll just expand on this and start doing some other yeah. topics too. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. So uh, thatanxietyguy.com or it's that anxiety guy. You Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Yeah. Billy, where where are you? 
anxiety united search it (laughs) yeah search it you'll find us we're there yeah yeah. and so if you have questions and comments bring them everybody's been really nice and said some very nice things to us and we appreciate that it's good yeah nice feedback good feedback people that have people that have gone like i've seen comments on earlier videos and people are just they're enjoying the pro process going through the videos in order and that's what it's all about isn't it yeah people are taking something from each step as I feel that I have. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I think and it's it's definitely, I get a lot of fulfillment out of doing these too. So I, you mm. know, I like to keep, we'll keep going with it. We have one more left in the series and we'll expand from there. And I think the best comments are the, the ones where people will tell us, I've never heard somebody talk about it like that before. Those are the yeah. ones that make me, yeah, yeah. make me feel yeah. good. Okay, we're out the door. I will, we'll see you guys next time. Yes, thanks for watching. Yeah, Hit thanks. the like button. Yes. Subscribe. I'm the worst To both YouTuber channels. Ever. <laughs> the worst yeah, YouTuber well, ever. I because never we're just not. That's not what this is about. I'm going to start doing makeup tutorials next week. Me, me too. I'm well suited for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys next time. Okay. Cheers. Hey, what's up, guys? Drew here. In the five years that I've done the podcast, I've never had a sponsor. But now it's time for me to put in a little plug for the day job, the business that I own. And that business is managed WordPress hosting. So if you have a website and it runs WordPress and you'd like WordPress hosting that makes WordPress faster, more secure, and way easier than you ever imagined it would be, then check out Helix. You can find us online at imhelix.com. That's I-A-M-H-E-L-I-X.com. We took a long time to build Helix. I'm super proud of it. It works spectacularly. We take really good care of our customers, and I promise we would take really good care of you too. So if you're in the market for WordPress hosting that will blow your mind, check out Helix. I would appreciate the consideration. I thank you for coming by and listening, and I'll see you the next time.